Hi, and welcome to lesson 5, Coherent Light and Single Photons. This is the first lesson in the series called Fundamentals of Quantum Optics. Step 1, Introduction. Why do we want to encode information as optical signals? Well, for one, uh, a light is a very good carrier of information because it's fast. How fast exactly? Well, in vacuum, we denote the speed of light by C, and it's given by 2.997 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. However, we don't send light through vacuum when we communicate. Uh, we can send it through air, where the light slows down by a factor of 1.0003. So really, that doesn't limit the speed of uh, light that much, and it's still given by the same number virtually. Or we can send light through uh, optical fibers. These are pieces of glass where the sp speed of light is uh, decreases by factors 1.467, which results in 2.045 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's still very, very fast. Apart from being fast, light is also relatively easy to produce. In the early days, if you wanted light, you could just light a fire. Nowadays, of course, we just use lasers and send those laser signals down optical fibers. And also, uh, light does not interact with other things that easily, and therefore it is robust to noise. For example, if you compare it with copper wires, where each uh, copper wire is carrying uh, electrons, electronic sig electron electric signals, these make, um, create electric fields and magnetic fields that affect other wires, which are carrying some other signals and therefore introduce noise. Whereas this is not the case uh, in optical fibers, and you can generally pack these fibers very compactly to one, in one each other, without affecting any of the messages. So, uh, optics has always played an important role in communication. We saw a couple of examples of that already in the Great Wall of China and Napoleon's semaphore, where we are basically sending optical signals to communicate some things. However, these methods were limited in the sense that you had to have a direct visual path between the sender and the receiver, and also, you needed good weather conditions, and they usually worked only in dead daylight. Then we learned how to control light and actually guide it through waveguides known as optical fibers. And all of these previous requirements disappeared. And this sparked uh, an expansion in how quickly and how far we can uh, communicate. This is a map of uh, the uh, main optical fibers that go across the seas and oceans, so submarine optical fibers. And you can see how many there are connecting all the continents, basically allowing us to communicate from one side of the world to the other within a matter of milliseconds. So in this lesson, we're going to be concerned with how to produce light. And in particular, we will look at three types of light. We will begin with incoherent light. So this is light that uh, can be produced by burning fuel or heating gas, and it's called incoherent because it doesn't have any coherence in it. And then we will explain exactly what this means. It's very easy to produce, which is why it has played a very important uh, historical role, as we have discussed already. And this type of light is known as a classical state of light, so it doesn't uh, manifest any quantum behavior. We will then move on to coherent light produced by lasers. And the main uh, mechanism behind producing this light is known as stimulated emission, which we will discuss in the next uh, couple of steps. This light is coherent. It's also relatively easy to produce, which sparked the first uh, um, information revolution. But again, it's still just classical state of light, and we will explain exactly why that is. And lastly, we will conclude this lesson by looking at uh, single photon sources. We will look at three main uh, ways of producing single photons by uh, attenuating laser light. Uh, we will consider uh, another scheme known as heralded uh, uh, photons. And then also we will look at a particular physical system known as nitrogen vacancy centers in diamond, which are, uh, among many other things, uh, good sources of uh, single photons. Uh, compared to the previous two types of light, single photons are very difficult to make, 
they can be only made under very, very um, stringent requirements in laboratories. But they can display uh, quantum behavior, which is why they are crucial in quantum communication.